Building a large electric generator is a complex engineering project that requires specialized knowledge and skills. If you're considering such a project, it's crucial to have a deep understanding of electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and safety protocols. Additionally, you may need to comply with various regulations and standards depending on the scale of the generator. Today, let's explore the largest and most modern factories with machinery and technology channel to see how they produce these giant electric motors. The first stage of production is design. The giant generators will be designed on computers and fine-tuned to suit the environment and customer requirements. Next will be the materials part. It is necessary to use high-quality materials to manufacture. The rotor and stator are important parts that contribute to the rotation of the generator, so it is necessary to use special materials for high durability. The motor rotor shape is a cylinder mounted on a shaft. Internally, it contains longitudinal conductive bars, usually made of aluminium or copper, set into grooves and connected at both ends by shorting rings forming a cage-like shape. The name is derived from the similarity between this rings and bars winding and a squirrel cage. The rotor bars may be made of either copper or aluminium. After being cast into blocks, the rotor shaft will be turned using specialized laves. On these automatic laves, Workers only need to attach the shaft to the machine and customize the parameters. Everything will happen completely automatically. The motor rotor shape is a cylinder mounted on a shaft. Internally, it contains longitudinal conductive bars, usually made of aluminium or copper, set into grooves and connected at both ends by shorting rings forming a cage-like shape. The name is derived from the similarity between this rings and bars winding and a squirrel cage. The solid core of the rotor is built with stacks of electrical steel laminations. The rotor lamination has a larger number of slots than its corresponding stator lamination and the number of rotor slots should be a non-integer multiple of the number of stator slots to prevent magnetic interlocking of rotor and stator teeth at the starting instant. Stator lamination with a rotor lamination, with 36 slots for the stator and 40 slots for the rotor. The rotor bars may be made of either copper or aluminium. A very common structure for smaller motors uses die-cast aluminium poured into the rotor after the laminations are stacked. Larger motors have aluminium or copper bars which are welded or brazed to end rings. Since the voltage developed in the squirrel cage winding is very low and the current very high, no intentional insulation layer is present between the bars and the rotor steel. The key to an AC induction motor, where the field of the rotor is induced by the field of the stator, is that the rotor is always trying to catch up. It's always looking for stasis, so it's rotating to find that steady state. But the electromagnetic field produced by the stator using AC power is always going to be a little faster than the rotor's field. The spin of the rotor is creating the torque needed to create mechanical power to turn the wheels of a car or the whir of a fan. Some AC motors use a wound rotor, which is wrapped with wire instead of being a squirrel cage. The squirrel cage kind is more common, though, in either case, there's only one moving part in an AC motor, which means there are fewer things that need replacing or maintenance. The iron core serves to carry the magnetic field through the rotor conductors. Because the magnetic field in the rotor is alternating with time, the core uses construction similar to a transformer core to reduce core energy losses. It is made of thin laminations, separated by varnish insulation, to reduce eddy currents circulating in the core. 
the material is a low carbon but high silicon iron with several times the resistivity of pure iron for their reducing eddy current loss and low coercivity to reduce hysteresis loss. After completing the assembly steps, the rotor and stator will be inspected. Each generator undergoes rigorous testing to ensure it meets quality standards and specifications. This includes performance testing, insulation resistance testing, and other electrical and mechanical tests. And to see how big these generators are, let's look at the contractors in India who are performing maintenance on the generators at the Panky Thermal Power Plant. After the overhaul is complete, the rotor is inserted inside the stator. It is so large that it requires the assistance of more than 20 workers to complete the installation. Creating these machines is extremely difficult, but maintaining it is also an extremely headache for engineers. Inserting the rotor inside is extremely difficult and requires very high precision. Just one mistake can lead to damage. And let's see how these workers completed the installation of this generator. 